Hi guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to start stripping the shovel head. So this video, and possibly another one because I don't know how long it's going to take, uh, is going to be about removing the primary, the whole assembly. And then there will be subsequent videos on replacing the stator and the voltage regulator, and then another one on trying to sort out the four-speed gearbox leak I've got. Please, join me. It's a, a voyage of discovery, so let's go and have a look and see what we find. Right, now I've done some shopping in preparation for this job. I don't know if I've got everything I'm going to need. We shall see. Uh, I have a, a locking tool to lock the, uh, the sprockets. That step goes in the chain to lock the sprockets for undoing, so I need one of them. I have a clutch centre tool, which will allow me to remove the clutch cover without losing all the springs, uh, to which end I have a clutch removal tool in this box, which we will see shortly. Now there's measurements in the workshop manual to make up your own version of this. Uh, and I believe in America, you can buy body washers, which will do the job for pennies, cents in their case. But we haven't got them here, so I just bought that. I think it was about £4.50. So not, not expensive. We have a case saver for the where the chain rides near the starter motor mount. I was told that was a, a sensible thing to buy while I had it apart, so bought it I have. And then the actual repair pieces themselves. So I bought a James gasket set, which seems to include all the gaskets for the transmission, certainly on this side. Um, don't even know what all of them are yet, to be honest. It, I must print out my workshop manual and uh, work out what all these, uh, where all these parts actually fit. Uh, but anyway, the, the main the main parts are there that I want: the quarter seal, the main seal, various other bits and pieces, lock washers, that sort of stuff. So that's good. And then I bought a super nut, which has a seal in the middle. It also comes with a lock washer. Uh, again, I was told this was a good idea. I don't know because I've never done it, but I've been told it's a good idea. So given how inexpensive they are, I can't remember how much that was, but it wasn't a lot of money. Possibly £12, does that sound right? It wasn't a lot anyway. And then finally, and this is my choice because I'm taking a gamble here, but I think I might need it given the amount my bike is leaking, is that the, the main seal rides on that in there, according to my workshop manual. And that's a spacer, uh, main drive gear spacer, 73 to 77 FLH. And I was told that uh, wear in the surface of that will stop a new seal from leaking. So again, given the amount of time and effort I'm going to go to to get this thing apart, I think it would be foolish of me not to just replace that. That again was about, I think it's about £14. So the, all the seal kit stuff was only about, all well, that as well. Yeah, if no one, forget that, I'm lying to you. All that lot was about... 36 quid, something like that. Something like that. So, inexpensive. Had it not been for the tools I'm going to need, this would have been a, a pretty cheap job. Um, I have got a couple of Imperial sockets already, which will uh, save me buying them, but I haven't got the main shaft socket, and I'm still waiting for that to arrive. Um, again, that's something that's very cheap in America, and seems to be very expensive here in the UK, but I can't do the job without it, so that's on the way. So, and then the other stuff we might need 
is a front sprocket oil seal which I suspect may also be leaking so I might as well do that while in there and I had to buy a socket for the front sprocket nut compensator unit if it's fitted I don't know because I'm taking it apart mini ball joint that was £9.60 delivered it looks to be quite well made as well can't go wrong at that price I don't think so there you go right the uh, main shaft socket has been successfully sourced now it's inch and seven eighths is that right? yeah inch and seven eighths now I was looking for one of these for a long time and the only ones that were on eBay in the UK were the two and a quarter inch ones for the twin cam and later bikes. The early ones seem to have stopped. So the cheapest one I could find in the UK was 60 quid. Now these were still available in America but by the time you'd paid the postage it would have been 60 quid again. So I was idly browsing on eBay and suddenly one appeared. 23 quid. Now given the size it's a chunky old socket for 23 quid and it comes with a alloy and alloy uh, protector so that when it's in place you don't damage the threads on the end of the main shaft, gearbox main shaft. So I, re I wasn't really expecting much, to be honest, at that price, but it looks uh, it looks well made. We'll soon find out. Anyway, not long after I got it, I got an email from the seller saying that uh, they've only recently started doing them, and if I could do any sort of review, they would welcome it. Now, I paid for this with my own money, I hasten to add. No discount, nothing. I just bought it as an ordinary punter. They had no idea that I was going to end up showing you this in a video because they had no idea who I am. So, I'll try it out. Obviously, I need to use it. And then, depending on what I find, I might do a short video and tell them whether it is any good or whether it's a pile of... Anyway. So there you go. But I'm very happy at the price. Half inch square drive. So I think that is all the uh, special tools we're going to need. Now there will be some general AF sockets which I already have. But that's, uh, that's it for the special tools. So let's get on with taking it apart. Right, before we get started, just a few uh, little bits and pieces. The battery I have disconnected. The gearbox is held to a plate underneath with four nuts. I'm assuming they're the ones I've just done up anyway. But I check them to make sure they're tight because I don't want anything moving when I start taking this apart. And I've removed the floorboard on this side to give access to this cover. Now, originally, the oiling in the primary would have been taken care of by a series of pipes from the oil pump that has been disconnected on this one. So it was running wet, which is why there's an oil pan underneath it. I've drained that out. It's absolutely disgusting. And there's a, a magnetic drain plug on there, which I don't imagine is original, maybe, I don't know. And that's a bit furry as well, so who knows what we're going to find inside. So I'll move the oil pan, I'll move the bike, I'll get up on the lift to try and get a bit more height to make it easier to video what's going on. And then we'll take the outer cover off. Right, the case, which uh, has continued to drop oil, is held on by screws, which... Don't seem that tight, to be honest. So I shall. Oh, that one's not tight at all. Right, I shall undo these, 
and bring you back when it's ready to come off. Right, the cover is uh, starting to fall off as the screws come out. So I was expecting more of a struggle. So there we are. One, two, three, four, five, eight screws, all the same length. And this one. Oh, there we go. One cover. And we have a small piece of brass. And I don't know where that came from. Almost looks like a rivet. Hmm. Okay. Slightly worrying, but there you go. And a big washer, which went over there. And there's also a bearing in the case, a needle roller bearing in the case. That looks good. Yeah, that feels good. Right. Oh, there's another one of those little. There's two little brass things. What on earth have they come out of? Right. I don't know is the answer. Definitely looks like rivets. Okay, that'll have to go and get cleaned in the parts washer. Right, so that's what we've got inside the cover. Got a gasket, which is... I might take off now, there we go. A gasket, which is... Uh, Still in one piece. And then, I'm assuming that is the compensator, which seems to be dented. I'm not quite sure how a compensator gets dented, but dented it appears to be. Strange. And then our chain adjusting sleeve. Our clutch drum. and our clutch mechanism. Okay, so I think we'll take the clutch off next, so I'll have to move you again, because I have to uh, get in your way otherwise. I'm going to need the first of our little tools. We'll have to undo that. Now I'm going to need a deep socket. So our clutch adjustment should be normal. Yes, it is, good. Should be normal thread. That's the actual adjusting rod. Yep, yeah, good. So that goes on there. That goes on there. And then if we tighten it down, it should compress the springs enough to undo those. Right. And our clutch cover comes off in one go. Doesn't look bad. No, nope, don't look bad at all. Let me just put that to one side. Grab my rag. So then we have Plate, which doesn't look anything like the one in the manual, so I'm assuming some sort of aftermarket plate. But again, it looks very good. And a metal plate marked out handily. Now they look pretty good. Alto USA. I'll have to look them up. Uh, not something I've come across. Right. Well, they're all good. The clutch is fine on this. And that just confirms it. I think it's been replaced reasonably recently, looking at those. So, that's got to come off. And that's got to come off. That's got to be released. I'm pretty sure the Bendix will come out. 
and I suspect that will have to come off in order to get that off. I'm going to have to look at the manual. I thought it would be uh, easier for me to understand, but it isn't, as I'm not sure about this. Right, OK, so I'm assuming all that will come off without touching that. So next job, I think, will be to ease the chain tension, which should be this one. And I'm assuming when that is undone, that will loosen that, which is on, yeah, that's right. So undo that, take that off. There we go. out with that. So we need to undo a clutch centre nut and our compensator. So we're going to have to get noisy. So the compensator nut should be our mini ball joint size, which it is, and it should be normal thread. Now I shouldn't have undone that until I've loosened these. So there's the first mistake. Because I'm, the tool... Well, I'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. Because the tool I've got probably won't fit in there now. So, stupid mistake. But it doesn't matter. Because the air gun's taking it off anyway. So it didn't matter. So had the air gun not taken it off, that should stay in place to use the tool to uh, stop the chain moving. So we then have a metal ring. One bit of compensator. That should come off there. And it has. Right, good. So we just need to do the, uh, the clutch centre now. Right, this is inch and an eighth. Uh, and this should be left hand thread. So we do it up, effectively, and there we go, a rather oily nut, so that should all come off together, and it does. Right, I shall go and put this to one side for cleaning. So as I was saying before, the rotor we're going to change later is behind there. But we've got a bit of work to do yet before we get anywhere near that. Right. Now then. Let's remove that for safety's sake. Now then. This is where we need, oh, what's that? Another plate. Oh, okay. Right, I'll just dig out the lock washer now. We've got the nut out to show you. I'll try to. Come on. Oh, lots of oil dropping. And more rivets. And I've just worked out where the rivets are from. That. I bet they secured that clutch hub. 
as the right size. Right, okay. There they are. So that's a problem. Because I'm not sure if we can get them. Oh, joy, oh, joy. Right, there's a lock washer on about, it's difficult to see. That fits down in there and knocks over to lock the, uh, the main nut. Now, yep, that's definitely where they were from. So that explains that. That should be riveted to that, and it isn't. Okay, I'll have to think about what I'm going to do with that. Now, that hub. is uh, on a taper. So we need to put that back in and turn it quite a long way down but with enough room for the thing to pop off. So that's going to go on there. We're a long way off that aren't we? Right. Keep winding this back in. Got some room for that to pop off. Nuts for that. Is that down even? Fairly. Yeah, fairly. So, when we tighten that, that should pull that off. I'm going to use a 3 8 for this. And yes, I know this isn't an impact. That's it. Nice and easy. and a seal in the case. Now then, I will have to check to see if that seal came in my set and I'll also have to check did the uh, friction plate can be re-riveted. 